The Graveyard I just want to know if my wife forgave me for the accident. I've asked her aloud many times in the dead of the night, and I've even asked her by her grave, but to no avail. It's not that I expect an answer. I don't believe in ghosts or spirits, at least not till here recently. I visit her grave seven days a week, sometimes spending hours weeping next to her headstone. My psychiatrist told me it's not healthy, but I don't care. As long as it makes me feel better and allows me to get grief and guilt off my shoulders, I still plan to do it. Two years ago, my wife and I were on a trip out of town when the accident happened. She was driving because I couldn't. Up to the accident, I was never able to drive because I was born blind. But even my blindness didn't stop me from knowing how beautiful she was. I met my wife when I was 18 and had immediately fallen in love. Though I had never seen her face, she was the best at describing her features. She was my height, about 5'10", a lean body because she believed in fitness, and a face that could have easily won a beauty pageant. Coal black hair, a shapely jaw structure, she described her eyes as midnight, almost black. For 10 years, I was able to feel her face, smell her scent, and listen to her voice in a happy marriage. I knew by my touch and her description just what my wife looked like with my imagination. Being blind is a challenge, but it's something you accept and move on from, making the most out of your life. I never allowed my lack of eyesight to limit my curiosity for her appearance or question my own doubts about her because I knew she was beautiful inside and out. And for 10 years, every day, I told her I didn't know why a woman of that stature could love a blind man. But Clarissa never felt sorry for me. She treated me as though I could see, and that's what I liked about her. That's one of the many reasons I fell madly in love with her. All my friends and family told me just how lucky I was to have been married to such a beautiful woman. But my world came crashing down when she died. She wasn't wearing her seatbelt, and we had slid on some ice going 40 miles per hour. She had been thrown from the car and had died on impact. My life had been spared, though I wish I had not worn my seatbelt too. I've never been one to feel sorry for myself because I've had no choice. But I miss her, and that's an understatement. She was my whole world. My heart ached for her. For the first time in my life, I was miserably depressed and had no will to live. Maybe if I knew she could forgive me, maybe then I could forgive myself and stop suppressing all this guilt. I had always told her to wear her seatbelt because I am a firm believer in never getting in a vehicle without wearing one. It just so happens on that faithful night, for whatever reason, for the first time in 10 years, I didn't tell her to buckle up. I should have known something was wrong when I didn't hear that familiar click. You'd be surprised what you hear when you can't see. Last night at the gravesite, was no different than any other night. I have a close friend that drives me to the graveyard and helps me to her grave, and then this person waits for me in their car. So I sat there by her grave, weeping hysterically, as I often have. Just a lost, lonely, heartbreaking, middle-aged blind man who had fallen into a depression. But last night, my life changed forever too. Kobe, I'm over here. A voice had come. My eyes were still shut and my head was bowed. I swallowed but didn't look up. Now my brain and ears were playing tricks on me. Kobe, the voice came again. It was Clarissa's voice. I lifted my head and opened my eyes. I could see. I had gained my eyesight. For the first time in my life, vivid colors dashed in and out of my sight. It was hazy at first, and then my newfound vision cleared. Standing by a tree beside her grave was Clarissa, and she was everything I ever imagined her to be. 
I felt as though I may pass out from the sudden surge of adrenaline and excitement of not only being able to see my surroundings for the first time, but also seeing my deceased wife as well for the first time. As my vision cleared, my heart raced with excitement and I staggered as another wave of emotion shot through me like a cannon. Clarissa? I questioned through chattering teeth. Tears began to well up in my eyes. I wanted to hug her, to touch her, to feel her, but I knew either this was some kind of cruel dream or I was seeing a ghost. She didn't speak. Her body was slightly illuminated, but other than that, she appeared normal. Her voice was emotionless, but despite all this, I felt no fear. I took a few seconds to look around me again. I could see the graveyard clearly, the trees, the road that led to the graveyard, the gravel path leading through the graveyard. Realizing this may be the only chance I would get, I said, crying, I'm sorry for what happened to you. I have missed you very much. Still, her silhouette just stood there, staring blankly at me. The wind shifted, blowing the tree limbs sideways. The tears kept coming as my lips quivered. I bravely took a step towards her. She lifted her hand and pointed towards the grave. Now I froze, looking down. Confused, I wiped my eyes and looked back up. The spirit was still pointing towards the grave. I took a step back now, slightly uneasy. Carefully backpedaling, I watched as my wife's spirit vanished into the night. I quickly gained my composure and rushed over to where it had been. I was shocked my legs could move so fast without hesitation. The cemetery felt lonely. The wind howled now, bringing an autumn chill to the night. I was shaking. I looked around some more, unable to believe I was actually seen. I pinched myself hard. I felt that. I slapped my face. It stung. I jumped up and down and even performed a short sprint on the white gravel pathway that divided the cemetery. Finally, out of breath, I crumbled to my knees and lay on my back as more tears of joy welled up in my eyes. The stars were not visible, but I could see the moon behind an overcast sky. I decided it was time to get out of here and go give my friend the news of her life that I could see. I walked towards the front and looked back at Clarissa's grave. Thank you for this gift, I muttered. I waited a whole week before going back to the cemetery. I had seen my optometrist the next day and he had declared this as an unexplainable miracle and said I now had perfect 2020 vision. Friends and relatives had visited of course, delighted of the news. They wanted to show me their face. I'd also spent the greater part of these days changing my lifestyle too because now I was going to be a 9 to 5 laborer from a disabled blind man. All the while, Clarissa had never left my mind. A few nightmares had woken me up that week, but I couldn't remember them. I knew I had to go back to the graveyard. Despite even having my sight, my heart still pined, still ached for my wife. Around midnight, I drove to the cemetery with a heavy heart. Making this walk in the dark many times with the aid of somebody else, I took in every step. The old cement steps leading up to the wrought iron gate, all the trees that were scattered in the graveyard, the moon, the night. Making my way to her grave, I didn't expect to see her again. I knelt down before her grave and closed my eyes to a familiar blackness. I whispered, I would gladly give up my sight just to have you back again. Something told me to look up, and there, before me, she stood. Only this time was different, much different. She was different. I hopped up, my eyes wide. Her face was distorted and her eyes were wild with death. Most of her skin on her face was hanging from her bones. She pointed towards the grave again, 
revealing a bony arm. My eyes widened as I stood frozen. I could smell her. It was as if she was offering me to go to the grave with her. I backed up, and she followed, hovering above the ground. The wind gushed, blowing the trees sideways. Limbs and dry branches fell to the ground. I continued to put distance between the ghost and me, but it followed persistently. I didn't feel as if I was in danger, but I also didn't feel comfortable. Okay, I said, stuttering. I stopped, and I stood my ground. I was halfway across the cemetery now. I'm sorry for whatever I've done. I just want to go home. I love you, Clarissa. I always will. The entity floated within a foot of my face. My whole body was in a state of shock now. I looked at my dead wife as close as I'd ever seen her. I saw colors that my mind cannot comprehend and beauty in that distorted, rotting face. But I also saw a deep blackness too. I was staring at death. And I didn't want it. I closed my eyes, willing the spirit to leave. I counted to twenty and opened my eyes. The wind had calmed and nothing was in sight. I left the graveyard that night for the final time, walking away with a message that was loud and clear. If I came back here one more time, somehow, some way, I would find myself in a grave right beside her, which is where I wanted to be buried. But I wasn't in fact ready to die like I had thought. I wanted to live and I wanted to move on with my life. And I knew my wife had forgiven me because it was not my fault. Years have since passed. My life is going great. Every once in a blue moon, I will drive by the cemetery. It doesn't matter if it's day or night. I catch a glimpse of my wife's spirit standing by the headstone waiting for me. I know in my heart she wants me to live, but what I was doing was not living. I was slowly dying. The moral of the story is don't carry guilt. Let it go and live. I believe firmly that everybody will get the chance to make men's in the afterlife. I just hope we all have a more pleasant face than the ghost of my wife.